Okay, um, any other questions? Okay, I will move on. So next one would be derivatives, right? We just talked about equity, and next one is derivatives. So this is good. For derivatives, classify as FVPL, okay? Classify derivatives as FVPL, okay? That's, that's good, <laughs> just remember this. Um, in the textbook, I think it said unless it's for hygiene purpose. So for the purpose of this, this course, this chapter, uh, I don't want to make it that complicated, right? I'm not gonna test you on those exceptions, okay? So for now, okay, just know that the derivatives is classified as FVPL, okay? Debt, right? This is the last grouping, debt. Uh, Right, depending, this is the tricky part, right? Depend, for that, it's depending on the intention of the management, okay? If the company purchased the debt um, for trading, right? They just want, they speculate, they think the price will go up, right? So that's why they invest into these bonds, they just want to flip it to make some money, okay? If the intention is to trade, okay to make short-term profit right this will be the short-term investment right uh, so then we are going to put that into the fvpl okay and again any changes in the value will go through the income statement okay uh, if the intention is trade and collect cash flows right so for example uh, certain um Debt, like bond, they give you an interest payment, right? For bond, um, periodically, they, will go, they are going to give you some coupons, right? You can redeem the coupon for the interest payment. So that's the cash flow to you, right? So if your intention is to, you can, you're ready to trade it anytime, but at the same time, you also code it to collect all these cash flows, right? Uh, dividends, in, interest, okay, then, put it into the uh, fair value other comprehensive income category, okay? If you have no intention to trade, okay? You won't hold it until the maturity, okay? If the debt is 30 years long, you won't just hold it for 30 years, okay? To collecting the interest. So in that case, you put it into the amortized cost category. Okay, so debt uh, can be one of these three. Okay, debt can be one of these three, depending on their intention. Okay, it's for, if it's only for trade, okay, short-term investment, then it's FVPL. If your purpose is to hold it for long-term until maturity, then it's amortized the cost. If it's anywhere between, right, then it's the FVOCI. Okay, so that can potentially be classified in one of these three categories, okay? Okay, here is a question. You tell me, okay, you tell me. Financial asset category is relevant for financial purpose, okay? Uh, a, investment in 500 shares of Bank of Montreal Management believes the shares are currently underpriced. Which category? FVPL, FVOCI, amortized cost? Which category? I would say VPL. FVPL. FVPL. Okay, I want to see your hand. Does everyone agree with, with this? Yeah. Okay, just yes. give one second. If you agree, maybe uh, sum up. Yeah, agree, sum up, FVPL. Okay, yeah, a lot of students. Yeah, very good, that's FVPL. Can one student explain to me why it's FVPL? Uh, it's because they want to take advantage of uh, the discrepancies in the price. So it's for short term. As soon as the price goes up, they are planning to sell it. Okay, good. Uh, so your answer is right, it's F FVPL. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the, the reason is, is not 
too close. There's a better reason for that. Anyone else? Um, Is this uh, equity, non-strategic equity? Okay, good. Very good. Thank you. This is the equity, right? The shares of BMO, that's the equity. And they didn't tell us anything about the special election. Okay. So remember, if it's equity without election, it's FVPL, right? Okay, next one. Uh, purchase of 1,000 shares of Epic Adventures, a public company with 10 million shares outstanding. Is this very hard? Is this FVPL again? Yeah, FVPL again. So because this is shares, right? And it's non-strategic, right? 1,000 versus 10 million. That's a very small percentage of ownership. C, investment in bonds maturing in 30 years. I want to say Amortize the cost. Amortize the cost, FVPL, FVOCI. Um, uh, I would say FVOCI. FVOCI. Why? Um, you're holding on to it very far, for a very long time, probably expecting to make a, you know, a comprehensive income. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? I would I say amortized cost. I think it's amortized cost. It's cost. Yeah. Amortized cost. Why? Because it's for long term. Okay. Because you intend to collect the cash flows coming from the coupons from okay. these bonds. Yeah, but uh, this question doesn't say their intention, right? They are they just are. saying they are investing in bonds. This bond is matured in thirty years, right? So the information just tells us it's an investment in the bond and the bond, the bond will mature in 30 years, right? It didn't tell us anything about the, the intention of the management. So all three answers can potentially write depending on the intention. If the company will plan to trade it in the short term, okay? To sell it in the market in, in two months, right? So then this will be a, FVPL, okay, if they want to hold it for 30 years, right, then this will be amortized cost, right? If they are not sure, right, you know, the, the, if they are not against the idea of trading in the near future, okay, at the same time, so they, they are comfortable with just collecting the cash, um, so then they will be FVOCI, right? Does that make sense? It's really depending on the intention. Yeah. Yes. Good? Good. Awesome. Uh, okay, so FVPL, okay, I'm gonna emphasize this. So you report on the balance sheet is the fair value, okay? That's this FV mean. So any changes, okay, reported in the income statement. So the, even the, unreal, the gains and losses are unrealized. They are still reported in the income statements. And the activity it should be reported under the operating activities, okay? It's reported under operating activities. Uh, you probably can, can see, right? Because if this gains and losses is in the, in the income statement, right? Remember uh, when we are doing the cash flow uh, statement, right? the gains and losses, right? Uh, using the indirect method, right? <laughs> you remember? So it's under operating activities, right? You are um, adding the, you are subtracting the gain or adding the loss back, right? Remember that? For the uh, operating activities. Uh, fair value, that's the measurement base. And uh, how do you know the fair value? Well, if there is the active market, lots of uh, traders, trading volumes. 
you, you would be able to tell the fair value, the price, right? So that's the FVPL. Okay, so I'm going to do this with you with one example, okay? Let's take a look at how this full pictures, how this works. Uh, suppose a company bought Royal Bank shares, 400 shares, September 20th, 2020, 2020. Each share cost $60. What's my general entry? So I'm trying to give you a lot of opportunities for <coughs> participation, okay? So if you have already participated, um, maybe uh, try to you know, leave it, give other people some chance to speak up. Okay, so I have lots of opportunities for participation today, okay? Uh, so if you already participated, speak up already, uh, maybe just leave a minute for other students to jump in. If nobody else wants to talk about it, then please uh, help out, okay? So the first one, uh, you know, September 20th, they bought Royal Bank 400 shares at $6 per share. What's my general entry? You tip it FVPL, uh, Royal Bank, and then credit cash for 24000 Oh, thank you. That's exactly right. Uh, these are the shares. It's FVPL, right? Shares that non-strategic non investment. So it's FVPL, okay? And 40, 400 shares times 60 per share. So that's the $24,000, okay? So November 15th, bought Tyler's 500 shares, uh, $40 each. Anyone? Uh, you. Pretty much the same as above. Okay. That FVPL investments and then credit cash for 20,000. Okay, very good. Okay, very similar to the entry above. Uh, 500 times 40, that's the $20,000. Okay, Royal Bank dividend. So Royal Bank shares issued a dividend. Uh, so half a dollar for each share, okay? November 24th. What's my general entry? You debit, you debit cash. cash and credit dividend income. Okay, for how much? Um, 200. 200. Okay, very good. Well, you guys are doing really well. Okay, good job. Um, okay. So year end, okay, December 31st, the Royal Bank share price went up by $3 from 60 to 63. What's the major entry? You debit FVPL investment uh, for three times uh, 400 yeah. dollars and gain on investment credit. Awesome. And, Month. Yeah, very good. So you debit the because this is increase, right? Increase in the investment, you are going to debit investment. So the three dollars each share times four hundred shares. So that's the twelve hundred, right? And then you credit again, right? Credit again on the FPL investment. Okay, very good. Uh, next. Uh, December 31st, the Tyler's shares dropped one dollar from forty dollars to thirty nine. What's your general entry? You maybe the gain on FPL investment. Okay. And then you credit the FPL investment from Tyler's. Okay. Very good. So, so I think it's gonna be a five hundred. Five hundred, yes, yeah, because the change is one dollar each share, right? So there are five hundred shares. Okay, uh, so basically, because your balance, your investment is the value goes down, so you credit investment, right? Uh, for Tyler's for 500, and you debit loss, right? The gain loss, when you debit, that's the loss uh, for 500, okay? So, um, last one, so on January 10th, 2021, they sold 400 shares, at $62.5 per share. This is the um, Royal Bank shares. They sold out all this, they sold all the shares at $62.5 per share. What's the major entry? Debit cash. Okay, for how much? 
That's a good question. 25,000. 25,000. Very good. Very cash. And what do you then, credit? Um, credit 25,200. And then another debit for a loss of FBPL investment. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, so you sold the shares. How much cash you get? Okay, so each share is 62.5 and times 400 shares. So that's your $25,000 share, right? You receive this much cash. And then you are going to remove the investment, right? So your investment balance is 25 to 200. Uh, so in the beginning is 24,000 and then you have an increase of 1200 so in total before the sales before the sales your balance of this account is 25200 because you 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 sold it you're going to you're going to close it by credit the same amount so you credit investment for the same amount to make it to close the, the account right to make it zero the difference is two hundred dollars. That's your loss, right? Debit loss on the FVPL investment. Any question? I have a question. Go uh, ahead. It's on page fifteen, like the previous page. On page page fifteen. Are you That's reading the textbook? No, 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 no. On this, uh, sorry, on the PowerPoint. So the page oh. before this. Okay. So okay, I see here. Yes. Yeah. So it's uh, where you said that an active market supports fair value. So what if the share is not actively traded? Are you going to use the FVPL for that type of share? Very good question, right? Uh, how to find out the share fair value? Uh, so there are three levels of fair value. Okay. Level one would be active market, right? So you could find the price in an active market. Okay. Level two is when there is no active market for this item, uh, you are going to find uh, 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 maybe an item that is similar to this item, but that item has an active market, okay? So if you, bought, bought, if you are thinking of A, but A is not traded in your fair market value, but A is very similar to B, right? And uh, the price should be the same. And the B is traded in a fair market value. So then you just use B's value as a proxy for your A, a value, okay? Uh, level three is about modeling, okay? Uh, finance, in finance, there are different models, right? And uh, one model we all know is the uh, discounted cash flow, right? The present value model, right? So we are going to use some modelings, um, you know, um, all these equations and stuff to figure out what's the fair value. So there are three levels. Um, the reliability is going, going down as the level goes up, okay? The active fair market value is the most reliable value, right? Once you are start using pricing models, then it's subject to error. It's less reliable. So, but this, that's the three levels of uh, fair values. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Anyone else have a question? Okay, so now it's a 6.10. We are going to take a 10 minutes break and come back at, a, no, 7.10. So come back at 7.20. Okay, take a 10 minutes break. <laughs> 